What's up, Lore Masters? We will be continuing the next step in my Starfleet Uniform series. So if you want to ensure that this video makes any sense to you, you'll want to watch it from the beginning. You can click in the top right hand corner right about now. If you've already seen the three previous videos, well, let's just get into it. Before we completely get back into the fold, I need to make a small correction. In the last video where I was breaking down the actual uniforms, I was discussing mid-2270 uniforms, but showing the late 2270 uniforms. I apologize for the confusion here, and while they both occurred during the 2270s, they are quite obviously different. From my experience, the early to mid-2270 uniforms are more in line with what the real military would wear, but the late 2270s seem more standardized, if not insanely uncomfortable. So let's talk about it. The colors for the different divisions would again change from the previous iterations. The command division would be white, operations would move to yellow, most sciences would become green, gray would be used for operations, communications, navigation, and some scientific departments, cause screw you green, you don't get all the fun. In fact, while we're talking about green, Windsor green would be used for operations as well, but more known for security. Cadets, trainees, and junior officers would have light red. Special services would be sky blue, and black would be for enlisted and non-commissioned officers. And finally, dark blue would be operations and federation forces. Wait, so they're just interchanging all of the colors for all of the divisions, none of them really have any definitive division color during this era. But I mean, who cares, right? It's only a military unit that has to operate knowing what the other person does. An interesting piece to note about the uniforms in the late 2270s is that the Delta Shield would become standardized. Unlike in previous iterations where different stations and ships would have their own insignias, all of Starfleet would now wear that Delta Shield. Historically, the Delta Shield had only been on the USS Enterprise. Oh wait, oh, sorry guys, I forgot that was retconned. Because now instead of the Delta Shield only being on the Enterprise, thus showing that that ship was special and had uniqueness, the Delta Shield was used by the USS Kelvin, USS Franklin, USS Shinzu, and the USS Discovery because fuck you original series fans, fuck you in your ass, we got merchandise and Klingon tits to show. The Delta Shield would be standardized across Starfleet. The changes from previous uniforms would again be drastic and show little to no rhyme or reason for the evolution. A flag officer's uniform included a double-breasted red jacket trimmed in gold worn over some form of turtleneck shirt with black trousers. Like we see in the past, the undershirt, stripes on the pants, shoulders and left sleeve would be colored with the division of the specific individual and who they worked for. The jacket would be closed with a clasp at the right shoulder that ran along the stripe. This would allow the wearer to show if they were on or off duty. Additionally, an optional vest could be worn under the jacket, but above the undershirt. Which again, this stuff just looks stupidly hot. God help anyone who had to go onto a desert planet in that thing. Non-flag officers would wear a similar uniform, except they would not have the gold trimming that would be found on a flag officer's uniform. Ultimately, in the 2320s, the rib collars were shortened and then by the 2340s, removed. As we have seen before, command officers were allowed to wear less formal wear and uniforms that would be more distinguished of their rank and service. Cause you have to make sure Klingons didn't confuse who was who when they beamed onto a Starfleet ship, am I right? This included, but wasn't limited to, a bomber jacket that was made of suede leather and one of the only pieces of clothing of this era to actually look comfortable. As we've seen in the past, engineers and medical personnel had specialized uniforms that they could wear. Engineering officers would additionally have a vest with pockets and a white or yellow undershirt as an option. Both would have the standard pants and boots that would accompany these different outfits. Security personnel had specialized body armor worn in the early 2270s that would last into the early 2300s. The armor was worn over a uniform consisting of a red shirt, pants, and red and black boots. The undershirt was dark green and sported a colored strap near the left cuff. The pants had the standard division colored strip running down the sides. The battle armor, as stated before, was worn on the torso of the individual, though the armor really left quite a lot of the body as a target. Enlisted personnel wore crimson and tan utility jumpsuits with black undershirts, or red for trainees with division colors appearing on shoulder tabs and the left strap. Interestingly, specialized uniforms would be worn by waiters, janitorial staff, and other non-military or scientific departments. I attempted to see if I could determine any rhyme or reason to these uniforms, and there is a startling lack of information on them. If I had to guess, I would honestly say that these positions may actually be civilian. The uniforms don't really conform to any other part of Starfleet. Unfortunately, there isn't a ton of breakdown on them though, but I feel confident that if there is, I'll be hearing about it pretty soon in the comments. 
A nice change, at least in my opinion, was the filled uniforms. When ships would send away teams, personnel changed uniforms that were generally darker colors and tan. These uniforms, while not perfect, did seem to somewhat hide the function and rank of the differing officers. They included a ribbed shirt that retained the department colored sleeve strap but dropped the pomp and circumstance found on Starfleet ships and star bases. Officers wore the Starfleet insignia belt while crewmen did not. The pants were the same color as the shirt with the division colored piping running down the side. These uniforms, generally, would seem to make it easier for teams to fit into their surroundings and so, again, these changes made sense. Also, officers that were yeomen of admirals or captains would wear an honor cord on their left shoulder, so, I mean, you know, pretty fancy. Now, this series was requested by a patron who wanted to compare these uniforms to that of the actual military. Something noted by Memory Alpha is that the uniforms, like the militaries of the 20th century, would have insignias donating time served in the fleet and commendations. And the research that I've done would corroborate this, so it's interesting to note at least. Before I move into the 2350s, I want to take a moment to state that this is probably where any real semblance of trying to stick with the real-world militaries stops. When The Next Generation aired, Gene Roddenberry had far more power than he had ever had in the series. He had always been against having Starfleet as a military, and so did everything within his power to move away from that. This is probably why we see it went from multiple uniforms to one more... simplistic uniform with no pockets. Oh, by the way, YouTube algorithms are based on interaction, so please send all your hate comments on how I am wrong about Roddenberry. I mean, just comment as much as you like. It feeds me and will make me more powerful than you could ever imagine. The mid-2350s to the early 2360s would see the standardizing of uniforms, including the changing of colors yet again. The command division would now be red, operations, including security, would be gold, and the sciences would be blue. These uniforms are the genesis of current modern Starfleet uniforms, uh, modern as of this video at least. The standard duty uniform would come in several different variants ultimately, and these are broken down by memory alpha at least into types. The division colors would be shown on the chest, back, and sleeves of the individual, along with piping along the shoulders, collars, and pants. The rest of the uniform, including on the pants and shoulders, would be black. These uniforms would be worn with the Starfleet insignia com badge. Starfleet uniforms also had the ability to have belts which allowed for phasers, tricorders, and other equipment. As discussed in previous episodes, we would see the introduction of the scant. Half skirt, half pants. Scant. These would be allowed for both men and women, cause equality. In theory, this may have been available for men throughout the history of Starfleet. I mean, unless you're saying the great Starfleet and Federation wasn't open and diverse to opinion. I mean, you wouldn't want to say Gene Roddenberry was a sexist, not wanting men to have skirts, would you? Would you? This version of the uniform, before 2367 at least, would require no undershirt. As we can see in this picture of Beverly, by the way, off topic, did you know nurses are pretty sexy? Yeah, I'm just putting that out there. Not related to anything in real life happening with me and an attempt to slightly put this in for no real reason, but yup. Anyway, as we see in this picture of Beverly, no undershirt was required. Around 2366, a new variant would be seen and slowly phased in. It would retain the two-tone style, but the newer version would have a higher, more formal collar. Division color piping was moved to the top of the collar, leaving a more black look. These uniforms would now have an undershirt that was tucked under the top piece. Curiously, there would be a captain's variant as early as 2368, which offered a jacket with black shoulders and gray undershirt. What I like about this version is that it would have a semblance of future Dominion War uniform variants. Oh, yeah, and they had a maternity uniform, because God knows the Vidians need those sweet, sweet fetus cells. Cadet uniforms would consist of a two-piece jumpsuit having the division color on the shoulders. It would have a low collar and no rank insignia. Also, something I didn't notice until Memory Alpha pointed it out, these uniforms would have pockets. Provisional uniforms, uniforms for those who were wanting to be cadets but weren't officially in Starfleet, would have two variants. The first was a light blue turtleneck tunic. It had navy blue shoulders, and its collar was bordered with the colors of all three divisions. Second variation was a gray turtleneck with matching trousers and dark charcoal gray ribbed shoulders. Like before, depending on the division as well as religious belief, uniforms would be slightly modified and altered. Various other elements could be added as well, though medical services would be allowed to wear overcoats. Also, if you're hot Betazoid, you can say screw wearing uniforms and just do your own thing, so there's that. Medical scrubs during operations would be in all red and cover the body, and, of course, if you don't know why they are in red, you should watch Deadpool, the original movie, not Deadpool 2. 
Like in previous iterations, there were utility uniforms that included a jumpsuit worn over a black long sleeve turtleneck. From the research I could find, this was mostly limited to star bases. If it was on the Enterprise, not including the lore, I really couldn't find any references. These uniforms were, of course, during a time of relative peace and pacifism. Stay tuned for the very last video I swear I'm not doing any more where we discuss the Dominion War variants. Guys, I want to give a special shout out to Memory Alpha. Without them, none of this is possible. I mean, seriously, a lot of my information is from Memory Alpha. Thank you so much. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to see you on the next Lore Reloaded.